Dynamite. So Tony Khan makes his an announcement, and he says, we have two of the three men in the very first Ring of Honor main event. Doesn't mention Loki's name. Guy's been canceled. So he brings out uh, Brian Danielson and Christopher Daniels. I thought they had a great opening match. Danielson tries the best moonsault ever right into a triangle. Referee stops it. Brian Danielson wins and then cuts a promo about how, you know, in the old Ring of Honor, we'd shake hands after the match. But I'm not in Ring of Honor. I'm in AEW. And he stomps Daniel's head in. Moxley comes out. They had this promo segment where, uh, can't swear on the air, but when it was over, I thought, man, S is going down here at this pay-per-view. And I was so excited for this match when this was over. I cannot wait for Brian Danielson and John Moxley on Saturday night. We had the uh, Casino Battle Royal, which is definitely more exciting than a Geek Battle Royal, at least early. But uh, it did fill up to the degree where there was just too many people in the ring. But uh, they shot it. They shot a lot of angles for upcoming feuds that Dave couldn't remember a single one of. So maybe they shot too many angles. Uh, but uh, it came down to Matt and Nick Jackson against the returning Darius Martin. Guy wasn't winning, but man, they gave that guy everything. He even eliminated Nick Jackson. And then uh, Matt Jackson low blowed him, super kicked him. So the Young Bucks are going to the three way at the pay per view. And uh, hell of a return for old Darius Martin here. So top flight is back together. We had a Jericho promo about the Kingston match on Sunday. Then Santana and Ortiz showed up and they fist bumped Jericho. Jericho said, Are we good? And they nodded. So there's more to come here. Then we had the CM Punk promo with MJF. And uh, Punk came up, or came out, and uh, it was a very interesting promo because he was not looking for a reaction, and the fans just quietly sat there and listened to every word he said. And he said, I used to ask myself if I was a bad guy. And he did say, he did say, I'm not sure this MJF is telling the truth or not, but... Uh, but I believe some things happened to him. And it, speaking up took some courage. And he says, I did some horrible things when I was a kid. And uh, I didn't lash out at the world. He said, uh, this MJF has done terrible things to people. And he mentions attacking Dean Malenko, insulting uh, the late Brian Pillman, etc. He says, it's not my fault you're like this. So I want you to come out and I want to talk about it. So MJF comes out, he says nothing. And MJF... Talks about all these horrible things that he'd done in the past. And he said, I look in the mirror today and I ask myself, am I a good guy? And uh, the answer I have is I'm trying. And he offers a handshake to MJF. But MJF shoves the hand aside and gives him the big hug. And Punk is not sure about this. But he ends up giving the guy the hug. And, of course, MJF boots him in the balls. And he stomps a mud hole in him. Spears and Wardlow bring out the ring. MGF punches Punk with the ring. Punk's bleeding everywhere. They hang him with the dog collar. MGF cuts the same promo that CM Punk cut in 2006, I think it was, when he turned heel in Ring of Honor. He's the devil himself. And CM Punk is going to he's going to learn that on Sunday. And so, at the end of the day, uh, MGF, it was a swerve. But uh, the story they're telling is that this is MGF's backstory. He's not making the story up. This happened to him. And he hates CM Punk because of it. And he lured him in. He tried to play to his sympathy and then screwed him, bloodied him up. And now they're having a dog collar match. I thought it was awesome. I don't know about the rest of you. Yes, Mike? Who was the person that didn't think this was awesome? I need to find that person, slap that person a few times, just have them turn on something else on their television because they will never love professional wrestling. Great pro wrestling, perfect build in a short period of time, realistically. And I know they've played the corners on this for quite some time, you know, with Punk coming in, but proof that this can be done in any promotion. Uh, again, if you have the right people in place and you treat things seriously, you give it some layers. This has been the best, I would argue, this is the best thing that AEW has ever done. I, I would I would actually go as far, and we'll see what the final match is. They've done a lot of great stuff. The build for this, the performances in this, the levels, how they have built it up, and all the gravity they've given to it, I would argue that this is the best thing that AEW has done thus far. 
What I would recommend, Mike, is you don't sneak into your own DMs today. Thunder Rose and Mercedes Martinez beat Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. This match was weird. It was clunky. And uh, it didn't look like it fell apart, but it certainly was not a smooth match. And Thunder Rosa pinned Britt Baker. And uh, you know how things go. She pinned Britt Baker. Now I don't think she's winning on Sunday. I guess we'll see. Anything can happen. But uh, that was that. Then we had Wardlow destroying Cesar Bononi. And uh, just your usual. Just squash the guy. And uh, this leads to Rampage Friday. Sammy, Darby, and Andrade in a three-way for the TNT title. Even though Andrade just lost, he snuck his way into the TNT title DMs. Keith Lee in action. Serena Deep five-minute challenge. And uh, Christian Cage versus Ethan Page. Winner goes into the face of the Revolution ladder match. Revolution has Statlander and Layla Hirsch. And Hook versus QT Marshall. In the buy-in, CM Punk versus MGF Dog Collar, Danielson versus Moxley, Sting, Darby, and Sammy versus Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy in a tornado match. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa for the women's title. Face of the Revolution ladder match. Keith Lee, Ward, Lawrence, Cassidy, Ricky Starks, Powerhouse Hobbs, and either Christian or Ethan Page. Jericho versus Eddie Kingston, Jade Cargill, Ty Conti for the TBS title. By the way, you'll have to wait till the Brian Vinny show tonight. So I could talk about Jade's awesome promo on the show last night. She, I think, gave MJF and Punk a run for their money in that promo. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Young Bucks and Red Dragon. And Hangman Page versus Adam Cole for the AW title. And that led us to the main event. Adam Cole, Red Dragon versus Hangman Page and the Dark Order. Uh, at first, Adam Cole didn't want anything to do with him uh, with uh, Hangman Page. Hangman Page finally lured him in. They had the big brawl. Then we add the blind tag to Alex Reynolds. Hangman was taken out, and Cole uh, hit Reynolds with the uh, super kick and the boom, as they call it, and pinned him. And then afterwards, the heels just beat down Hangman. They taped him to the ropes. They destroyed his friends right in front of him. Adam Cole super kicked him in the ropes, hit him with the belt. So a very uh, heavy heat angle leading into the pay-per-view. Not heavy heat enough that I believe Adam Cole has any chance of beating Hangman Page, but uh, they did the heavy heat angle to go off the air. And uh, overall, I thought a very, very good episode, very good go-home show of Dynamite. They had to do something. <laughs> they had to do something. They nothing. They, they, how Adam? Obviously, you would redo Adam Cole. I think you would redo how you debuted Andrade. I think you. Would, I think there have been, you know, a couple of times where they've they've slipped. For as great as some other things are, there there have been some slips. And I think Adam Cole, unfortunately, has been a little bit of a, a miss here. Luckily for them. They have such big matches that don't have anything to do with the world title that even though, unfortunately, it's the world title match, so you don't want to actually say this, but it can be a little lower down on the card and it can be a, lower, a little lower down in everybody's minds on this show because you have so much good other stuff. But I hope they got something for, you know, I don't know what they have next for Hangman Page. You know, Kenny Omega is not ready to come back yet. I don't know who it's going to be. Uh, and I guess in theory you could continue on to do Adam Cole as well too, but Hangman Page I think would needs a banger of a feud and I I don't know what the deal is with with Adam Cole, you know, right now, uh, FTR and Fish and O'Reilly because of what took place on the floor in that tag after the tag battle royal. They look like they could be involved with each other. Uh, and, and Cole, I'll say this, he needs something strong and he needs something that people will be able to sink their teeth into because this has been a slip, I, I think, uh, ultimately how it's gone. And I haven't been, frankly, you know, Jay, Jay White, in the little bit they've used him and, and kind of, they've kind of done the same sort of thing. And I just, they have not maximized those guys, I, I think, in the best way they could. Favorite quote from The Simpsons? Can you do an impression? Sure. Okay, so uh, Bart was doing some road cleanup, and he said, Hey, Krusty, what are you doing here? And Krusty says, uh, It's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. That was a very good impression, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.